Hi guys, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin. Today, oh, my microphone is going away. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right. So, this is Sugar MD Ultimate Diabetes Channel. Today, I'm answering a question from a follower, from a subscriber. So, this is a lengthy one, but I think it is intriguing. So, I think you will find this enjoyable for me to answer the question here. I may not be able to give like exactly, hey, Dude, this is what it is, but I'll tell you all the possibilities that this is happening. And here is the question. Listen carefully. So this is, his name is Trout Tamer. Sounds like Tamer in Turkish. I don't know if he's a Turkish guy or not, but uh, his English is pretty good. So we'll see. In Turkey, people don't speak English that much, so no offense. All right, so he is saying that I have been watching your videos voraciously and it really helped my understanding of type 2. I'm glad. I had a diagnosis about 20 years ago, and when my A1C was around 7. I am 6'4", well, that's tall, and uh, weighed around 210 pounds. I immediately lost 10 pounds and dropped my A1C down to 5.7. Good job. Over the last 10 years, my A1C has averaged around 5, but my blood sugar, when taken, is rarely below 120. Now, 120 is in milligram per deciliter. I don't know what was it. Uh, I'll, I'll put it on the screen right here in a second, okay? In like millimole per liter. So, 120, ra rarely less than 120. About four years ago, my endocrinologist prescribed Farsiga on top of my Combiglice. I feel like he actually is in America with his medications. I immediately dropped another 13 pounds and now average around 174 pounds. Well, that's a lot of weight loss, buddy. Good job. Very good. My doctor has been unable to understand how my A1C remains so low, but my blood sugar remains relatively high. They did hook me up for Libre for two weeks. Libre is the continuous glucose monitoring device. If you guys don't know yet, if you're a follower, you probably know because we have a lot of videos about that. But anyways, they did a Libre just to see what's going on, but the results were inconclusive. And I don't know what exactly they mean by that. They didn't any attach any pictures or anything like that. So they also ran a fructosamine as well, but yielded no conclusions as well. So fructosamine is another test that tells you the, the blood sugar averages in the last two to three weeks. It's not a very well established test like the A1C, but... We typically do this if I want to know what has happened in the last few weeks uh, compared to three months. And that also yielded no results. So I have neuropathy in my feet and very frequent urination. So I do, well, I'll tell you what that is. So I do have the symptoms of type 2. He is from Northern European ancestry. Well, obviously he's not Turkish. Uh, no skill cell in the background. My dog remains stumped. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting word. Uh, but my A1C is so reliably low, he seems unconcerned. Oh, we got an unconcerned doctor. So is that a good or bad thing? We'll see. I try to eat healthy, but I pretty much eat what I want, although in moderation. <laughs> okay, you're relying on the medications a little bit, huh? But I continue to lose weight. Well, again, medications help actually a lot sometimes. Two of my brothers, not that I'm a pro-medication guy, but they do help. I mean, I've seen patients losing weight on some medications up to 80 pounds. I was like surprised myself. Two of my brothers and my father, 96 years old, well, that's good genes, have type 2, but my brothers have both, they're both overweight. And any thoughts as I remain concerned? And again, thank you very much for your YouTube channel. Well, thank you for the, the question. It's interesting, and uh, I will go over a few things here. I'm going to hold the phone in my hand because um, uh, really I have a few things to point out here. So number one, congratulations on doing a great job on maintaining your A1C below 5.7 or 5%, etc. So a couple things, I mean, we have an A1C video, but the how correct is the A1C is totally reliant on your red blood cell health. So if you're anemic, for example, your A1C can be falsely high. If you are taking iron supplements, if you are getting some sort of uh, treatment for your iron deficiency or, uh, or anemia, it may be falsely low. So there's a lot of reasons that A1C may not be correct. In this case, I would definitely rely on more to the blood sugars that you get with the finger stick. Now, we have problems with finger sticks as well, and, and that's, that's, here's, a, here's a fact. The finger sticks, 
are not 100% accurate either. So how do you know how close is your glucose meter to the real measurement? Now the gold standard in this case is drawing blood and immediately testing. Even sometimes when they draw blood, they send it to the lab like a couple hours later, your blood sugar may be falsely low. So typically if we are concerned about somebody's blood sugar levels, if it is correct or not, especially if somebody's having a lot of low blood sugars, for example, we are not sure if there's a real low or if it is artificial low or if it is fictitious low, whatever. We order a stat glucose level to see so that they can immediately check the blood sugar from the vein. And now at that point, what you can do, you can have your, uh, or you can check with your lab, see how long they keep the, you know, in, in Quest or LabCorp in the United States, they're pretty fast. I don't think they're keeping the tubes too long sitting around. But, you know, when you check your blood sugar through the vein and then do a finger stick, you will see a difference. If your vein shows 100 and then your finger stick shows 110, then you know that you're looking around 10% variability. And again, the, when you look at the statistics, if you know about this a little bit, every test has a margin of error. So if your meter has a margin of error 10%, you will probably get around 10% higher or lower reading. And some meters can be up to 20%. And 20% at a very high or very low number can make a big difference. Like if your blood sugar is 200 or 300, right? So 20% of that would be 60. So if your meter is kind of a cheapy meter and you're getting like 20% variability every time, uh, you can check your blood sugar now from this finger and then check it again from this finger in five minutes. You may get a 60, per 60 point difference if your blood sugars are running, running really high because of the 20% variability. It can be even more than that because think about this, 20% plus minus can be a huge difference. So let, let, you may get as, as low as 240, you may get as high as like 340, especially at this high range. Now, same thing is also true for continuous glucose monitoring systems like Libre or Dexcom. Now, Libre improved their accuracy with Libre 2 version of the Libre, but you cannot use them with the phone, and so it's kind of a pain in the neck, you know? <laughs> Dexcom remains a little bit better overall, but they're way more expensive than Libre. So, but the bottom line is, when blood sugar changes very rapidly with those glucose monitoring systems, or at the very high or very low range, the variability can happen and there is some delay in in the blood sugars. So if they do your Libre and your blood sugars, I don't know, I, I kind of have to see that, but it's not going to give a conclusive result because again, you're looking for variability. Now, if your A1C is 5.7%, that is just saying that your average blood sugar is 110, 115. So here's what's happening. If you're, blood, if you're checking your blood sugar, you're saying rarely below 120. If you're checking your blood sugar at say eight o'clock in the morning, you may be looking for a dawn phenomenon. So you may be going down to 90, 80 overnight, and you may be 120 by eight o'clock. When I say overnight, like three o'clock in the morning, you may be down to 80, and then you may rise to 120 between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. So that's called dawn phenomenon that happens a lot. Now, the glucose monitor, especially Libre, especially the older Libre, uh, does not really tell you exactly what's happening. They're giving you a ballpark. So again, since Libre is not gold standard in blood sugars, it is not going to give you the exact answer. So here's your problems. The A1C is not gold standard in understanding exact blood sugars. It's just an estimation. Even with, let's say, 6% A1C, it, it corresponds to, on average, 120 blood sugar. But, but, A1C also is not exact science. Even your blood sugar is perfect. Even your red blood cells are perfect. You're not anemic, none of that. You're a perfectly healthy guy otherwise. 6% A1C with the variability. Again, remember, every test has variability in it. So 6% A1C can suggest, although we, we say, oh, your blood sugar should be on average 120, but it can be as low as 100, it can be as high as 140 in reality. So, so if your A1C is 5.7%, let's say your average blood sugar is supposed to be 115. In reality, 
in reality, you're maybe real average blood sugars. If I hooked you to a vein, like I hooked you to a machine, and I'm monitoring your blood sugar like in an ICU setting, intensive care unit setting. In that case, you know, you will see the, exactly what's going on. But with A1C, again, you're looking for an estimation, a, a variability. Your blood sugar finger sticks has variability. So there's so many variability that you will never match exactly like an exact science of A1C and the blood sugars and the Libre. They all give you estimations. Now, why is your doctor not concerned? I'll tell you why. Because he knows your blood sugars overall is in a good range, okay? So he would be concerned if your A1C was 5.7%, but your blood sugars are going to 180, 200. He would be like, uh, that doesn't make sense. You know, even with the variability, that doesn't make sense, right? So your doctor is not concerned because he knows overall you're doing a good job. Now, what your doctor should be concerned about, you eating whatever you want. So yeah, you're taking medications and all that, but eating whatever you want will eventually catch up with you and you will need either more medications or your weight loss will stop and you will end up having problems. Now, when you say eating whatever you want, maybe you mean good, not necessarily bad. And you know, eating good or bad is a very subjective term. You know, some people may say that, oh, I'm just eating a pint of ice cream every day. That's whatever they want. And some people may think that just eating a cracker uh, or a little cookie every day uh, is considered whatever they want. So if that's whatever you want and it's not excessive, that's okay. But as I said, your doctor should be concerned about your diet because if you're not eating right, not just because your blood sugar will be affected, but you're still looking for a lot of problems. Not eating right can lead to uh, cancer. Not eating right can lead to autoimmune diseases and, and overall well-being and your overall health. So, But uh, I hope that answers your question around the A1C, the continuous glucose monitoring systems and finger sticks. Like I said, it's, 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 it's science, but it's estimation. It's not... None of these tests are gold standard. So I hope that helped you guys and we'll see you in the next video. All right, thank you for watching and I want you to be more informed and more educated. So to do that, go ahead and watch this next video right here.